my screen? Yes, yes, now it's perfect. Yeah, thanks, sir. Oh, okay. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Xiaofeng Luo from uh, Central China Normal University. Uh, I'd like to discuss with you about uh, uh, status and uh, progress on the search for the QCD crit point uh, in heavy calculations at the RIC. Um, So you know that actually in our middle school science class, we know that the water has uh, uh, three state, ice and uh, liquid water and the gas. Uh, so actually we know that the matters um, uh, will uh, 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 go in phase transition by varying the external condition, for example, the pressure and the temperature. Uh, the right hand side show you the uh, phase diagram of the water. You can see that uh, how they, I uh, change their face uh, with different uh, conditions. Uh, because this uh, water phase transition is dominant by electromagnetic effect, so that uh, we see uh, those phase transition happens around uh, 100 uh, degrees. We has also the first order phase transition, uh, 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 land, and also the critic point. And at critic point, uh, you, we know that the correlation lengths will diverge and also the, the uh, uh, the divergence of the thermodynamical quantity, such as a specific heat. Uh, um, and uh, actually the phase transition is happening because of the uh, uh, competition between the thermal motion and the, the interactions. So if you don't have interaction, basically you don't, will not uh, uh, have a phase transition or if you only have this, uh, for example, the uh, uh, free gas, free gas. So, um, actually, the phase transition is uh, competition between them. For example, the Van der Waal interaction that we, uh, we know very much that uh, it has both the uh, attractive interaction and also repulsive interaction due to the uh, size of the moleculars. And uh, please go to the slide uh, uh, three that uh, actually, um, so the water have, have phase transition around 100 degrees, then if we heat the matter to trillion degrees, then what will happen? Actually, uh, at such high temperatures, uh, uh, the, the form of the matters uh, basically will, uh, is uh, uh, made of the free quarks and gluons. And uh, uh, this uh, will, and will form a new form of the matter called the quark gluon plasma, which is, exists at the uh, early universe after the Big Bang. And uh, um, experimentally, we can actually collide in two nuclei to create such extreme conditions. Uh, this uh, uh, allowing us to study the uh, properties and the phase transition of this QCD, hot QCD matters in the uh, controlled conditions. So this is uh, actually a conjectural uh, QCD phase, di uh, phase diagram. Um, you know that the y axis, axis is temperature, and the x axis is the baron chemical potential. Um, actually, we know not too much about the QCD phase diagram, except uh, at a zero baron chemical potential from hydrogen resonance gas to quark gluon plasma is a smooth crossover uh, that we know from the lattice QCD calculation. And the transition temperature is around 160 MeV. And uh, at a high baron uh, density region, that uh, by many uh, effective model calculating, calculation, it is suggested that it's of the first order phase transition between these two phases. Then if th those uh, are both true, at the small mu b is the smooth crossover, and at high mu b is a first order phase transition, then we know that there must be a QCD crit point as the end point of the first order phase boundary. Um, which is co uh, co called the QCD grid point. Um, so a key question is that uh, whether there is a QCD grid point at a finite baron uh, density region, and, uh, and also whether we can map out the first order phase transition boundaries experimentally. And if uh, we confirm those structure in QCD phase diagram, actually it will greatly enhance our understanding of the universe evolution and also the structure of the visible matter. And uh, you can see at this QCD phase diagram at high temperature region, it is related to the, uh, our 
uh, universe evolution and also at high ground density is, is related to the, the dense object in astrophysics, which is, uh, happens in our, uh, nowadays. So uh, understanding the phase structure at high baron density region is extremely important to understand uh, and also connect it uh, the, uh, the, the early universe and uh, the universe nowadays. Um, actually, that, uh, the, from the theoretic side, uh, um, there are a lot of prediction about the loca location of the uh, QCD credit point in the, QC in the phase diagram. Um, uh, here, I just uh, show you a compilation from the, some lat uh, result from lattice QCD and the Dyson swing equation, also F fun a functional normalization group theory, and also as a, uh, some effective model calculations. You can see that uh, the result from those uh, uh, computations spread a lot, uh, spread a wide region in the QCD phase diagram. So that means we have still have large uncertainty for the theoretical estimation of the credit point location. Experimentally, at actually efforts, a lot of efforts have been made to trying to explore and explore the QCD phase structure at high baron density region and also search for the possible QCD credit point. And uh, uh, Currently, the ongoing experiment, uh, for example, the uh, RIC star beam and scan program is ongoing. Uh, its first, of its, its first uh, uh, phase beam and scan has been complete uh, uh, in 2017. And uh, currently, the second phase uh, beam and scan is ongoing. And, uh, and also, um, two, uh, two lower energy experiments are under construction. The, uh, MPD experiment at the NICA, and also the CBM experiment at the uh, uh, GSI fair. Uh, the NICA is a collider experiment, and uh, also the, but the uh, uh, CBM experiment is a fixed target experiment. And also there is an experiment called SPS, which is a fixed target experiment in CERN, and it's, uh, it's, this is its energy range. Um, so you can see that actually in the uh, coming future, the the um, exploring the uh, QCD phase structure at high burn density is a very hot uh, topic uh, uh, in near future. And uh, the the relativistic heavy collision collider that I'm working on that uh, um, is uh, uh, in uh, Brookhaven Brookhaven National Lab at the U.S. and uh, the star experiment is located at the six o'clock. Uh, six o'clock is at the Rick Win. And uh, actually, it's, uh, uh, the RIC, uh, the RIC accelerator energy is, it, is, uh, it can vary from uh, 200 GV down to 5 GV per nuclear pairs. And uh, it's also the highest energy polarized proton collider. Its top energy is the center of mass energy is 500 GV. Um, and uh, this is uh, uh, our star detector system that uh, you can see that there the uh, uh, in the center of the star uh, uh, detector system is a time projection chamber, which is, can be used to uh, do tracking and also particle uh, identification with this an, uh, energy loss. And the, uh, in the barrel position, there is a, a so-called the time of flight detectors, which can be identified the uh, particle with high momentum. So that means it can extend the PID capabilities up to high, higher momentum uh, regions. And uh, it has large uniform acceptance of the middle rapidities with two, two pi azimuthal and uh, the eta range is plus minus one. So and also it will provide you uh, excellent particle identification. And this is a data set that has been collected uh, since 2010 to 2017, which is uh, first phase of the RIC beam scan, we have collected energy from 200 GV down to 7.7 GV with those uh, data uh, energy point and also the corresponding number of events. Um, from this energy, actually with the, some formulas, the parametrized formulas, we can obtain this so-called the chemical free that uh, mu B and the temperature. And we can see that by tuning the colliding energy, we can um, access uh, a border region of the uh, 
board region of the QCD phase diagrams, for example, it's mu B is around from, can be uh, varied from uh, uh, 25 MeV to 420 MeV. That is a, a wide region. And uh, for, uh, we have a, a advantage of this collider experiment that uh, because uh, for different energy and also different particle species, our, our acceptance is uh, rather uniform at middle rapidities. That will minimize our systematic, systematics when you do in the beam scan to search for the uh, uh, QCD credit point. Um, so you can see the left, this plot just, just show you the, the, how the chemical phase out is close to Q, uh, QCD phase boundary. The, you can see the left plot show you this, uh, 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 the green band is uh, QCD phase boundary that uh, from the lattice uh, uh, calculations and also the, and, uh, the data point are from the Rick Beeman scan. Um, the, the yellow band is from the, some uh, uh, fit to the chemical phase, of, chemical phase of point of the data. It's a uh, parametration formulas that you can see that uh, the, actually the uh, ex chemical phase out obtained from the experimental heavy calculations are very close to the uh, result of the QCD phase boundary from the lattice. This is very important because we are trying to see, uh, uh, search the signal of the phase transition. So it's very important that our chemical uh, decoupled temperature of the system is very close to the QCD phase boundary. And the right plot show you this uh, very famous K-pi ratio as a function of the collision energies. And you can see this uh, f uh, famous non-atomic energy dependence of this k plus over pi, pi plus uh, ratio as a function of collision energy with a peak around 8 GeV. And, and uh, the, uh, the, uh, the green band actually is from the thermal, uh, thermal uh, result, a uh, thermal model result. You can see that the, the, those data points can be well described by thermal model ca calculation. Um, and also, uh, based on uh, from the thermal model, that uh, uh, below twenty below eight GeV, there is a baron baronic dominant, and uh, above eight GeV actually is a, a, a meson dominant system. So we can define a high baron density regions between two to eight GeV. And uh, in order to search for the QCD credit point, we need to uh, very sensitive to observables. For example, uh, experimentally, we are now uh, um, we are using the so-called the higher moments of the conserved charge distribution and also the light nuclear productions to search for the QCD credit point. Uh, due to that, we will uh, uh, met the large density fluctuation and also baron clustering in the vicinity of the uh, QCD credit point and the uh, uh, first order phase transition. So the experimental signature of the uh, credit point will, will be that uh, the non-montonic variation uh, of those colliding energies for those uh, experimental observables. Um, the first uh, of sensitive observable I want to discuss with you is so-called the light nuclear production. Uh, the light nuclear production actually from the theoretical uh, model prediction that uh, um, due to this uh, uh, very large density fluctuation and baron clustering in the vicinity of the credit point and also based on the coalescence model is the yield of this light nuclear will be uh, uh, will be affected by this uh, so-called uh, 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 the nuclear density fluctuations you can see the, the term here. Then if we, you can see some uh, coefficients in the front that in order to be compared to experimental measurement that which is easily measured, we can, we need to construct the yield ratios between different particles. Uh, for example, the triton times uh, neutron yield divided by neutron yield square. By, by constructing this uh, yield ratio, you can see that uh, it's, uh, um, sensitive to the neutron density fluctuations. Experimentally, we can measure the uh, left side, whether it is then to see whether this observable 
has a non-atomic energy dependence. Um, the light nuclear production actually is a, a study, has been studied a, a long time ago in heavy collisions. And uh, uh, in traditional nuclear, nuclear energy, we know that those uh, uh, light nuclear actually with a very small, uh, a few MeV bonding energies. And, uh, and also, you know, we know that in heavy collision environment, it is very, with very high temperatures, with 100 MeV. So one natural question is why we can still observe for light nuclear production in such hot environment in heavy collisions. And it can also be well described by the thermal model predictions, you can see. So that's a, a very, uh, that's a actually need to be understood. It's also connected to the uh, production mechanism, whether uh, it's a coalescence or microscopic interaction and also thermal production of those so light nuclei in heavy collisions. And all, this, is also to under, to, this is also important to, uh, to search for the phase transition signal with this light nuclei uh, before we can understand the light nuclei uh, production me mechanism. Um, so experimentally, we have actually measured uh, those production of the deuteron and triton in the uh, Rick Beeman scan. And you can see that we can identify those uh, light nuclei with the uh, time projection cham chamber and uh, also the time of flight. Um, we, can we can extract those uh, deuteron and the triton signal by, and uh, you can see the background uh, 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 is small and we can uh, extract the, those light nu nuclear production. But we still need to do uh, many corrections before we obtain the environmental spectrum. And uh, this slide is just show you this uh, uh, result of the deuteron and the triton production from the first phase of the Bimler scan week uh, from 7.7 .7 GB to 200 GB. The left side is the deuteron, the right, the right side is the triton productions. Uh, for, you can see uh, for different, also different collisions and qualities. By integral those spectra, we can obtain the uh, gain divide at middle rapidities. And by obtaining those, the gain divide of those uh, light nuclei, the deuteron, triton, then we can obtain the so called the particle ratio between the deuteron over proton and the uh, triton over proton, and as a function of the collision energy for most of the central collisions. You can see that uh, the uh, both deuteron over proton and the triton over proton show a de uh, decreasing trend as a fun when, the, when we increase the energies. And also the deuteron over proton can be described by uh, the thermal model results, thermal model calculations. However, from the triton side, you can see that uh, our triton result at the rate energy and below are deviated from the thermal model prediction. But uh, from uh, Alice result at the 2.76 uh, TeV result, it follows thermal model prediction. So this is uh, still a puzzle why the Triton result at rate energy and below deviate from the uh, thermal model prediction. And uh, then we plot the uh, light nuclear yield ratio Triton times proton over a deuteron square and as a function of the collision energy for 0 to 10 centrality, which is most of, which is uh, central collisions. Uh, you can see that uh, we, we see a clear, clearly non-motonic energy dependence behavior with a peak, peak structure around 20, uh, between 20 to 30 GeV. Um, and at a low energy, which below 20 GeV, our, our results are consistent with the result from the NA49. We, all, we also have done a transport model studies. We can see that our transport model calculations should basically show flat energy dependence, and uh, which cannot describe the experimental data. Uh, uh, but, uh, I will, uh, in, those tra in the transport model calculations, there's no any, there's a, a 
uh, they don't have any phase transition physics in those transport model. So now the second uh, sensitive observable that we use to search for the QC creep point is the so-called the higher moments of conserved quantities. Uh, the, from theoretical prediction that uh, the higher order fluctuations have a higher sensitivity to the correlation length of the systems. Um, and also, which if we take the cumulant ratios, the ratio of those cumulants, then we can directly connect to the uh, susceptibility of the system, which can be computed theoret theoretically. And, and experimentally, we can event by event measure those uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, conservative charge distributions for uh, for different collision energies. Then we can, from those distribution, we can measure those high order uh, cumulants. So the first measurement we have done in uh, around the 2010 that uh, we reported the net proton fluctuation uh, for three for several energies, and uh, then later we reported the result from the uh, Rick Beamer scan. We have measured the net proton, net charge, and net kaon fluctuations. Uh, and the net proton is a proxy for this net baron fluctuation. And net kaon is a proxy for net strangeless fluctuations because, uh, in, uh, because we cannot measure some uh, neutral particles at mid rapidities. Um, from the theoretical side, that uh, w actually, um, what's the signature of the QCD critical point for this high order fluctuations. And actually there is thus uh, many model calculations. I give you an example here that which is from the Sigma field models, model calculations. Uh, it describes that uh, if the chemical field of the line passes through the critical regions, it, the fourth order fluctuation will receive a, a negative contribution and also the positive contribution here. Then the first order fluctuation will show this non-monotonic oscillation behavior. First, then the, you can see the red, red curve corresponding to this uh, uh, high energy negative contribution region. And when we go down uh, to this low energy, which is corresponding to high mu B, then it will uh, receive positive contribution from the critical fluctuation. Then it will show this uh, uh, large, bed, large uh, signals. So this is a, actually a, a characteristic signature of the QCD query point. If we, our collision systems, the chemical phase out line has ent entered in, into the critical regions. So that's, this is a pattern that we trying to search in the experimentally. Um, so in the following, I will show you some details of this our, our measurement uh, of this high order cumulants of the fluctuations. Uh, so for, for net proton measurement, we have to measure, identify the proton and antiproton. Then the proton number minus antiproton number, then we can obtain the so-called the net proton number event by evently. Um, so we, for to identify proton and antiproton, uh, uh, diff, uh, we have actually used different. Uh, we have used uh, both time projection chamber and also the time of flight. And the lot flow PT, we identify proton and antiproton with TPC time projection chamber only. And also at high PT, we need to uh, identify proton and antiproton with both TPC and TOF. This uh, gave us a. a, a purity of the proton and antiproton um, larger than 19%, 97%. Um, this show you this uh, event by event net proton distribution for the in go-go collisions, which is 35% to most of central collision. And uh, for different collision energies, you can see from high energies to low energies, how the net proton evolves. Basically, you can see their mean value uh, increase as when you decrease uh, when you de when we decrease this collision energy. This is mainly because this uh, at low energy we have larger uh, baron stopping and 
that means we have larger bound density. That's why the net the proton is uh, larger than antiproton numbers. Then its mean value is larger. Um, so to obtain those uh, those uh, to obtain the, this un, this actually distribution is efficiency uncorrected. To obtain the efficiency corrected, we have to um, do the efficiency correction and also some techniques to suppress the volume initial volume fluctuations. And uh, so a careful centrality determination and lead it. So, and this figure just show you the distribution of net charge, net care, and the net protons. Um, here I show you the energy dependence of net proton, um, energy dependence of net proton cumulant C1 to C4 as a function of the collision energy for two different uh, centralities. Uh, the red one is 35% and uh, this uh, empty marker is 70 to 80. And uh, from the high energy to low energy, you can see this uh, increase trend of this uh, mean value. That means the baron stopping. Um, and uh, and also this uh, high order fracturing C2, C3, C3, and C4. Um, so this result as efficiency and uh, uh, centrality beam width correction has, has been applied. It. This, uh, this result has, has been submitted into a short version paper and a longer version paper is uh, also prepared and under review we will provide more information, including, for example, so a correlation function and also proton and anti-proton individual cumulants. Um, so here I show you this cumulant ratio, which is uh, left of one is screenless time sigma equal to three, C3 over C2. And the, the right one show you the kurtosis Thomas Lawrence is C4 over C2, which is uh, uh, for net proton fluctuations. Uh, and uh, you can see that C3 over C2 show you a monotonic uh, increase when we're decreasing the collision energies. This basically is due to this uh, uh, baron, uh, baron asymmetries. At low energy, we have more uh, barons compared to uh, proton compared to antiprotons. And, but high energy is mostly is a, a baron, it's a, a pair production dominant. So the right hand side just shows this so called. Uh, uh, fourth order fluctuation of this net proton number. And as I said, uh, you, uh, as I discussed with you, the, you can see that uh, we, we see in central Google collisions, we see a clearly num uh, trend of this first decrease. And at uh, below 20 GV, uh, see, we see an uh, uh, increased trend, although the error bar are still large. So, um, so whether we will, this is uh, at uh, 2.4 GV, there's a point uh, which is Hadis result from Hadis collaboration. Um, and uh, you can see that one important thing is that whether we can uh, find a peak structure below 20 GV. So it's very crucial we perform the very uh, precise measurement below 20 GV. So in second phase of the beam scan, that we will reduce the error bar to the to this uh, to the uh, green band you can see which is between 7 7.7 7 to 20 gv our results were uh, a statistic error will shrink to this green band and the, also star has the fixed target uh, mode uh, running that we will collect the data uh, down to 3 gv we will, we will also be able to measure the result between three to 7.7 .7 GV. Um, so we, we have compared our experimental result to different uh, 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 model calculations. The first one that, you, of course, is uh, uh, we use the URKMD transport model to compare with our data, you can see, uh, which is, you can see, uh, monotonic decrease trend when we decrease in the energy. And we also use a hydrogen realness gas model with this both uh, grand canonical assemble and also the canonic assemble. And the grand canonic assemble actually the barrel number is uh, conserved on average, not event by event. So you can see this uh, 
uh, the black dashed curve that for kurtosis Thomas Warren's the ground canal assemble result will give, give you this flat unity result. But if we consider the barrel number conservation, which is uh, correspondent to this HRG canonical assemble result, you can see at low energy to assure suppression trend, uh, which is also consistent with this URKMD calculation. And also for the blue curve, for the blue curve that we actually use this HRG with uh, some excluded volume um, uh, of this, uh, uh, of this uh, hydrogen reference gas, that actually assume that uh, uh, this uh, particles in the system have finite volume that uh, actually you cannot uh, infinite close to each other. So actually it is uh, equivalent to some, you add some repulsive interaction. This will also suppress your fluctuation. You see this blue curve. And so, uh, so we have done uh, actually a statistical, uh, statistical uh, test to, to describe whether uh, our data uh, can be described by those models. Um, we, we have tested those and the cap, uh, with k square test and uh, obtained the p-value below 27 GV. We found that actually the trend of the data uh, cannot be described by those models. You can see the p-value, they are all uh, uh, um, um, and it's, uh, very small. Excuse me, Professor Lu, but uh, mm -hmm. your time is over. So please okay, go to conclusions. Then we, we can come back to other slides during the discussions, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, sorry. I will, go to conclusions. Uh, okay, I will discuss, uh, sorry, I will discuss my uh, summary and outlook. And uh, so we, we found that the uh, yield ratio of light nuclei and the fourth order net proton fluctuations in central collisions show, show this non-atomic energy dependence, which uh, uh, could serve an important experimental basis for the critical point search. And uh, um, we need a lot, large statistic to, uh, to measure those high order fluctuations. And also, and in future, we will uh, uh, study this high baron density region with high precision with those, for example, the future uh, facilities. Okay, that's all, thank you. Thank you very much for your very impressive talk on both theoretical experimental side. Unfortunately, we do not have time for even short questions. Therefore, I ask everyone, please reserve your questions for the discussion, which will be later. Okay, now please the, stop sharing your screen and I call